So with everything going on with Prime Trust, as it relates to Fortress, there's been a lot of questions of how this relates to uh, one of the individuals and institutions that I talk a lot about, which is iTrust. So to make things crystal clear, I had to reach out to the team and just ask them what exactly is going on. And thankfully, Kevin Maloney came in, who's the CEO of iTrust, and he's going to answer some questions. Kevin, welcome back to the show. I think this is our second uh, second appearance, maybe third. Yeah. yeah. Hi, Rob. Thanks for having us. Yeah, appreciate it. We're, we're always here to chat and, uh, you know, nothing to hide, I think. The more transparency we can offer to our clients and your audience, the, the better off everybody is. So thanks for having us. Yeah, let's get into it. We got four questions and it really just comes down to, you know, transparency and what's going on. Now, you can't obviously speak for Fortress. Fortress will come on later. Uh, we'll see how, how that works out. But there's a couple of questions. And the first thing I had is because beforehand you guys uh, were using Coinbase and Fireblocks. They might have been somebody else. And now we went over to Fireblocks and Fortress. So my question is, is how many custodians did you guys actually look at? And why did you guys decide to go with Fortress itself? And then also, uh, what are you doing to verify this information? Because let's be honest, it's in this industry, we've seen a lot of failures and a lot of things just go down because people get ahead of themselves. And we can talk about Voyager and Celsius and FTX. So how are you guys verifying this, not trusting with Fortress? And then the next question is, what's now? What's the ideal situation? And of course, what's on the horizon for you guys? So the first things first, how many custodians do you guys look at? And why did you guys pick Fortress? What is so special about them in general? Yeah, hi, Rob. Um, thanks again. The uh, Well, first of all, I think just to, this is all my perspective. I'm not uh, here to malign other people or other businesses that maybe um, may have failed in the past, but just I'll give you some of our perspective. Um, but I think most of this, most of these debacles we, we read about or have heard about over the last year, particularly, and they've been going on since uh, since crypto began. But I think most could have been avoided or, or, or most of them are due to fear, greed and stupidity. <laughs> it's uh, every time it, these could have been avoided, these debacles. So um, and how do we do that? Well, transparency and trust. Right. That helps build and rebuild credibility in the marketplace. So how do we get there? Um, it's one of the reasons we chose Fortress. Uh, we looked at, you asked how many, you know, trust companies did we evaluate? Um, we looked at 11, 10 or 11 different trust companies over the last year. Some of them literally could not uh, answer our due diligence questions. Uh, some of them had massive balance sheets. They raised a ton of money, uh, but we didn't trust uh, the team or the deep tribal knowledge that we wanted in place. Uh, we looked at Prime Trust. Um, and uh, we went with our gut on that one. And based on our due diligence, uh, they didn't have a few infrastructure uh, um, things in place that we needed to have in place. Um, so, you know, we we did a lot of deep dive on, like I said, 10 to 11 companies. Some were great technology platforms. Some were about to get their MTLs, money transmitter licenses and charters. Uh, those never came. Uh, some mm -hmm. had balance sheets. Some had great uh, mm -hmm. um, um, because we did you know we do we believe and we still believe that they have uh they have deep tribal knowledge in this space it was very clear that they had um had been in the business for decades and uh wanted to grow this business and and do the right thing they had a clean charter uh, their charter was issued uh recently from the state of nevada within the last you know, couple of years um they had an excellent technology platform they refer to as core uh, and we knew that we were going to have access to really good information. We weren't going to control assets. We were not going to initiate and distribute assets. That's not what we're allowed to do. Um, but we feel very confident. We stand by them in our decision as a qualified custodian. Uh, they are compliant. They are audited. Uh, they are regulated and they are run by uh, former banking commissioners, Albert Fortner, their CEO, is a uh, highly credentialed and very trustworthy person. I'm also uh, have board observation rights at Fortress Trust. I said, look, we need more transparency and access to information than we've ever had before. They said, how about complete board observation rights? Again, we don't control assets. We don't um, execute the trades on the assets, but we have access to the information because uh, as you mentioned, we need to um, you know, tr treat everybody with kindness and, and trust and respect, but you can't trust everyone. And uh, so we have to trust, but also verify. And that's what we do. Uh, we, our systems, which I think would be interesting to note, 
you know, are connected and we, our teams communicate and work together on a daily basis. And I think a lot of people don't know that we're not just a, uh, a brand, a marketing engine and a client service platform. We work with Fortress Trust and their team on a daily basis. So we have a lot of transparency to the data and that gives me comfort. Um, and it doesn't guarantee anything. I know that won't mean much for your audience, but we do get a lot of uh, transparency and access to information. And that's key. I was in Austin this week at Fortress um, meeting for, we had 11 hours worth of meetings over two days. And I met with two of their independent board members, you know, um, and we had really great conversations about why their comfort level is high with the team, what they're doing that's unique, better and different from Prime Trust and why we continue to, to stand by these guys at, at, from a qualified custodian perspective. Got it. So like just to, to catch everybody up, we we actually talked about this. Uh, there was a video that we did and this was going back oh just a couple of days ago. And the whole thing kind of started with Prime Trust collapsing, or potentially, I'm not going to say it is, uh, we'll see what actually, you know, kind of comes out. But the problem was uh, this gentleman, <clears throat> Scott Purcell, was uh, the former founder of uh, Prime Trust. And then two and a half years ago, he moved on to Fortress. And we took a look at what that was. Actually, Scott has come out and talked about that. But that is, you know, kind of like where we're coming from. And of course, because... Uh, with iTrust itself, you guys are using Fireblux and, and, Fire, and Fortress right now. This has come to light. But again, it really depends on your view of things. I mean, if you think that uh, two and a half years is uh, not enough time to move on. But from what we can see, it looks like the management that, that took over, there's been issues in that direction. So that would lead me to my next question because we there's a lot of people to actually take a look at, you know, to see where it is. But what exactly are you guys doing to verify that stuff? Because he talked about, he said, okay, we've been to the office 11 hours or so. You're able to see it. <clears throat> what other kind of verification are you guys doing? Yeah, so let me, let me just make a comment on sort of the management. And, and again, this is all our perspective. We, we don't have more information than others that are um, right. you know, researching publicly available documents. But from the petition, the banking uh, put out there from a public uh, document perspective, it it what it looks to be pretty clearly stated that the events leading to the customer losses at Prime Trust were in quotes new management, right? So, I think um, that language helps absolve any wrongdoing involving this matter and and points to the the new management who were fired very publicly in December 2022. Um, not surprisingly, there hasn't been a lot of scrutiny on the leadership team that inherited the wallets. Uh, and the key management uh, in early 21. It looks like there was a press release that uh, this this new executive team was hired, yeah. uh, promoted within. And there's another press release that says when Purcell left Prime Trust. I'm not here to defend you know Prime Trust and Fortress, but I'm just giving perspective uh, based on publicly available documents. And the and the CEO that took over, the individual that was promoted, this is a former Secret Service agent who. Uh, had expertise in financial or cyber crimes, hmm. right? And um, and this team went on to raise 150, 60, 70 million dollars. It's really hard to raise that kind of money if, if if you're not handed over a decently clean ship. If there are a bunch of holes or leaking leaks in the ship and it's sinking, it's hard to raise that much capital. Um, I'm I'm just curious why people aren't really looking into the team that took over, the experts that took over, not only did they have client assets sent to wallets marked as inactive uh, by the pre previous leadership team, um, but uh, they weren't, they never tested to see if the funds could be, you know, withdrawn from those wallets. And that's, that's a huge fumble uh, from our perspective. Um, I'll, I'll just note, let me give you our exact I, I trust capital experience. We migrated from, Curve wallets in, and um, to Fireblocks and Coinbase in, at the start of 2022. And I think mm -hmm. this is really helpful perspective. You know, the custodians that sent iTrust Capital crypto uh, in kind still had instructions to send out crypto to old wallets that were inaccessible curve wallets. How they have these old instructions to old wallets, not sure. Uh, it's on us. ITC received client assets in these crypto uh, wallets that were legacy and we couldn't access them. We reached out to CoinCover, one of our partners, and began the wallet recovery process. This is a responsible approach 
to retrieving client assets. Um, ITC swept the dead curve wallets. We were able to get into those wallets with CoinCover's help. And uh, we swept them into a temporary wallet to recover the crypto and send it to our main Fireblocks wallet. It's happened before. This has happened before. But there is a way to, A, test it. Can you get in and can you get out of these deals? And we took responsible approaches to, in the event that these uh, in-kind assets were inadvertently sent by custodians that didn't see our updated wallets or whatever for whatever reason, hmm. assets have been sent to wallets that were closed, legacy wallets. And we had wallet management steps in place to recover the uh, passwords and, uh, and retrieve those assets. These people are secret service financial cyber crimes experts with deep experience they didn't test the wallets of the you know assets flowing in to, and test going out they activated uh, uh, legacy wallets and, and took on what looks to be tens of millions of dollars didn't say hey let's just see if we can get a hundred bucks out first nobody <laughs> tested them and there was no backup recovery I, I don't I don't know uh, how how that would be on the new team and again, the commission clearly states that the you know uh, steps taken that were leading to customer losses were new management. So uh, it, it's <clears throat> so what what is that you know uh, that's that's something that'll get battled out in court. Um, it's unfortunate that they didn't have wallet management systems in place. Uh, the meeting we had in Austin this week with you know Prime Trust independent board directors, executives, general counsel. Um, their lead technology is uh, technologist. We were also dialing in on on partner calls with, um, uh, you know, the uh, you know other uh, cold wallet and uh, trading providers, liquidity providers. Really good insight. I feel like we're getting the transparency that we need to to keep our comfort level high in this time of uncertainty. The markets are skittish, a lot mm -hmm. of uncertainty, mm -hmm. and everybody's pointing fingers at everyone else. Sure. At some point, we do have to trust that our partners and vendors are going to do the right thing. But we do have to verify that the audits are clean. They are compliant. There is enough transparency on our end without breaching fiduciary duties, giving us access to information, but not access to control assets. That's a very fine line. And, and we, we will continue to push for that. So we are, um, you know, uh, um, working with Fortress and, and, um, uh, closely as they are um, looking to engage independent auditors. It's not going to check the box for everybody, whether it's a weekly independent audit or monthly independent audit. It's a step in the right direction. Their board supports it. I support it. We want it. Customers want it. It's a step in the right direction, but it's not going to check everyone's boxes. At the end of the day, our systems talk to each other and our teams work together uh, daily. And we look at balances to make sure they're reconciled and, and, and accurate. And while we can't control assets, um, the system is working. Clients are depositing assets on a daily basis. Clients are requesting distributions on a daily basis. And those distributions are getting sent out on a daisy, daily basis from the, ops, the FinOps team at, at Fortress. We think they're doing a good job. We're also looking to improve some things. Fortress is what we believe to be phenomenally clean on the regulatory side very compliant, SOC 2, type 2, with bank regulators, not just as advisors and board members, but running the company. The CEO of, of Fortress Trust is Albert Forkner. It's not Scott Purcell. Um, and, and we think these people are you know, highly credentialed and qualified and very transparent about their strengths and weaknesses. We actually appreciate that. They asked us to sit on the board and have the observation rights. So I'm on the calls with the auditors. I see mm -hmm. the financials. Um, I've, I've looked at, you know, wallets, I can't control them or push buttons or send them out, uh, but we can see those. And I think that is a step in the right direction. We are looking for more transparency and more access. It'll never stop, but we want to make sure we don't cross the line because we are not the qualified custodian. Uh, but we are also, I think it's important to reiterate, are not just the brand. We're not just the client service. We do work with them on a daily basis. It's not blindfolds on. We, you know, clients click buttons on our website, buy it, set it, forget it. We hope Fortress takes care of it. It's a it's a daily interaction on the phone, by email, Slack, you, you name it, um, and that won't stop. But we are happy to say that um, after, you know, it hasn't even been 90 days of onboarding yet, but we are and stand by the team 
and our decision to choose them as a qualified custodian. Uh, but again, we're going to trust and verify every single thing, every step, every day. And we've been doing this for four years. Clients can lose their own money, but we cannot, right? It's a self, <clears throat> self-directed uh, program. They're going to trade, buy and sell and trade. They may be up, they may be down. We can't control that. But we can control a few things uh, with our partners and our own behavior. We can't lose assets. We can't lose them in a wallet. We can't lose them and lend them out, right? One of the reasons that uh, I think it's really important to reiterate on why we chose Fortress is that um, under, you know, Nevada state law and regulatory law, you know, we can't commingle. We can't lend. We can't rehypothecate. Uh, any of these. And Fortress seems to take that very, very seriously. I don't know where the wheels fell off, where the moral compass stopped pointing north with anybody potentially on the prime mm-hmm. trust side of the equation. But from what I read and the chronolog- chrono- chronology of events, it looks like a clean, profitable entity with proper wallet management systems were in place and handed over. And somewhere the wheels fell off after that. It's very unfortunate because this is a black eye for all of us in the industry, all of us. Yeah, I will say this. It just comes down to, I think mostly just, I actually, I'm not going to say anything about what's happening over at Prime Trust because I don't know enough information. I know some things were, were done that were not uh, precise. And now we're in this situation. I will say one thing. And that is since this whole situation has happened, there's been maybe one or two people have reached out to me and said, hey, you know what, Rob, there's something, there's something wrong with distributions with iTrust. I don't know, I, I, you know, for something, something that is a hiccup. Okay, so I will take them and I'll reach out to you guys. And within 24 hours, things are, uh, you know, rectified. And that's, I mean, that's from just the last week or so, this, this things move on. So even though there's like people who like, you know, it's like, hey, I haven't gotten a distribution in 24 hours. I'm like, well, it does take a little bit longer, but I still will reach out to them. And then things get things get done. And over time, the last six months, I mean, we've been together for now like a year and a half, I think. Maybe yeah. two years. No, it's been over two, <laughs> two years. And uh, we're still there. So Yeah, I mean, look, we're not perfect. We have systems in place, processes in place, and people that we have uh, engaged with that we think are our trusted partners. At the end of the day... We have to trust that people are going to do things by the book. It's unfortunate that this is happening. It's not surprising. It is unfortunate. Um, And we're going to continue to have small glitches here and there. But I would encourage people to reach out. Jared Feldman is not a bot. It's our real client service expert. He leads our entire team of client service experts with passion and vigor and transparency. And and sometimes he's a punching bag. Uh, Sometimes we've screwed up. But, But we really try to offer uh, that safety, security, and peace of mind by picking up the phone, answering the emails, and walking people through. Um, It is not perfect. It is not an overnight process. But if there is an issue that hasn't been resolved, uh, and there is a small cohort of really valuable clients that have had some issues stemming, uh, you know, a couple days, couple weeks, and that is really painful for us to see. But we have nothing to hide. Uh, Fortress doesn't have anything to hide. Um, it is unfortunate that the management team, you know, came from prime, but again, it was two and a half years ago, but we're working together through the glitches that happens through uh, fortress and the LPs. We want to make sure we get best pricing, best execution. We have a custodian through Fireblocks and Bitco. We want to make sure it's really safe and that the recovery steps are in place. We have qualified custodian boxes we have to check and they are regulated and, and, and bank chartered. And we want to make sure that the SOC 2 type 2 compliance uh, stays active and in place. Uh, those are the reasons we chose Fortress because we know their strengths, but we also see their weaknesses. They work with us to overcome any of those weaknesses, sort of with a lot of transparency. Uh, there's not a lot of bloviating and no, that's not us, that's you guys. It is, wow, thanks for pointing that out. Um, let's get that fixed right away to get that customer experience back up to four and a half, five stars. And to us, that's most important. Um, we looked at, as I mentioned, a dozen, up to a dozen different um, qualified custodians uh, or people that were going to get their charters, people with big uh, balance sheets and lots of experience. Some ran out of money. Some had lawsuits. Some lost client assets. Some had no experience. Uh, some didn't get their charters. 
Um, and it, we, our, our board, we had three recommendations that we made. Our board said, no, we went back to the, to the, to the trenches, re-evaluated all of these companies multiple times. Um, and it became very clear that Fortress was uh, one of the few in the space that could help us achieve with the infrastructure and technology uh, that what we wanted. And we are working on improving the trading experience, improving security uh, on the um, on the custody side, and for us, improving the transparency through third party audits and our own visibility into client assets, which is really key. Again, we can't touch it or control it, but we can see it, and that's yeah. really helpful. Gotcha. Which you know, I think that's that's why a bunch of different companies that when they jumped ship from Prime Trust when they figured it out, a lot of them did go to Fortress, and I think there's a reason behind that. Which I guess will lead me to my our last couple of questions. I'm gonna roll these together, which is, and you, you talked about it already, but just to overview, what's the ideal situation moving forward? I mean, you talked about you know sitting down with the with the management team, going over the books and things like that, and having an independent auditor. But in all honesty, an in, independent auditor, it doesn't matter if it's if if, if it's a month, you know, an audit every month or a week or every three days. I mean, a lot of things can happen within the, within those time frames. We've seen it already. So. Is there anything ideal that you can think of right now? And then lastly, what's on the horizon for iTrust? What's in the, what's in the books that it's actually uh, coming through? Yeah, so from, from an ideal situation, uh, we, can, we would all continue to get more regulatory clarity. We, we, sure. already, we are already you know, um, working with a qualified custodian who is audited and regulated and can have site visits at any time from any of the states through which it has MTLs and other licenses through. They have an annual audit with the state of Nevada. Um, and I think those audits are going to become more difficult, more stringent, more challenging, and with more transparency, uh, more scrutiny. And we and Fortress both welcome that. It's the same, uh, likely the same auditors that were auditing Prime Trust. Uh, I think they don't want this to see this happen again. I think people are going to come down hard on the players that remain. And, and we in Fortress actually welcome that because if you get through these audits with a clean slate, doing the right thing, putting clients first um, with good service and not overcharging them, uh, I think the cream will rise to the top. Right now, it's kind of been a tough time in crypto the last year and a half. Fear, greed and stupidity led to a lot of, um, uh, you know, of defunct companies. Some people had good intentions, but they had bad business models. Some people got greedy and maybe started off with decent intentions, but the moral compass uh, started you know, pointing elsewhere and the wheels fell off. It's hard to get back on track. Some people lost keys to wallets and huh. were figured potentially, I can speculate, uh, maybe people won't notice and we'll find those keys and we can fill it with this you know, customer funds. You can't do that. It's all illegal and nobody here wants to go to jail or lose client assets. We take that seriously. And Fortress Trust, the culture, the DNA, the people they put at the top, the, the money, the millions we've all spent on compliance and trying to do the right thing seems right now like a good fit. We stand by it. It seems like the best fit. There wasn't a lot of other options when we looked at the other 12. Going forward, what does a perfect picture look like? There is no perfect picture, but I would love to have more regulatory clarity sure. uh, from the SEC, from FINRA, from the you know the bank uh, regulators as it relates to crypto. Make it stringent. Make it difficult. Make it expensive. Let's all step up our game and do it the right way. Um, we do believe that at some point the SEC and others will see that having the qualified custodian or trust wrapper around client accounts with third party attestations or audits that these assets are segregated, ledgered in individual accounts, held one to one, off balance sheet, not lent out, not rehypothecated, not commingled uh, with other company um, uh, with other company uh, operational expenditures. Right. I think that will go a long way. And, and I look forward to that. So regulatory clarity, more scrutiny is going to come out of this. We're all going to come out cleaner uh, for the players that are doing the right thing. If people are off and they think they can hide it very long, you can't. The market's too efficient, right? You can fake people out a little bit here and there, but eventually you can't hide very long. And the rules get tougher and tougher. And the few people left with strong balance sheets and good people with a moral compass pointing north 
My background is compliance. I was a compliance officer at a two and a half trillion dollar asset management firm, PIMCO, uh, many years ago. And it was one of the best things on my resume ever because it made me really appreciate it's a hassle. It is a lot of work, but it made me appreciate the compliance and the nature of it and and truly what it's there for to protect the little guy the little gal right the crypto moms and dads out there anybody in traditional finance and i have a deep found appreciation for compliance we had a great record we had a great rapport with finra and the sec at pimco and i took that to heart it was part of the culture and dna from the top down it's one of the reasons i joined this firm is because the compliance and regulatory side was so critically important and we spent millions without a lot of clarity, trying to do it right and by the book. And the moment we get more clarity, the moment most of us doing the right thing will step up to that as well. But in the meantime, we act like an audited, regulated firm because our partners are, and that's really important to us. Um, going forward from, a, from an exciting perspective, uh, it, it, getting away from sort of the drama, uh, I have like a crypto, a crypto mom and crypto dad hat and all these fun <laughs> hats I'm gonna make I'm going to make another hat. It says like, you know, handle your scandal, right? Handle your, <laughs> you know, I got to get another one that says handle your crypto scandal. And another one that says save the drama for your mama. I mean, it's just <laughs> so ridiculous out there. But if you get to <clears throat> finding good partners with a moral compass, with transparency, trust and verify everything, or as you say, don't trust anything. I say treat everybody with kindness and trust and respect, but don't trust anybody until you verify and we're going to continue to do that. It was part of our discussion on Wednesday over 11 hours with Fortress executive team and their independent board members. Why are you comfortable with this group? What are we missing? Uh, we want more transparency and access that will never end without breaching duties and um, jeopardizing uh, their, uh, their rules and regulations. And, and I think we're getting to that place. From, uh, from a new product and service perspective, we're excited about adding some uh, access to private equity uh, deals uh, here in the near future, uh, real estate on blockchain with yield uh, from real assets. We are looking at uh, cash accounts, not because I want to compete with the big boys out there, you know, finance, you know, crypto.com, Kraken, um, Coinbase. But our clients are asking for cash accounts. They like us and trust us. We pick up the phone. We answer their calls. We we hear their uh, consternation and we address the issues. We're not hiding. We're not perfect. We're going to mess up, but we're not going to lose your assets due to nefarious, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, you know, behavior. And right. so I'm excited about those new products. Uh, those are in the uh, some of those are in the pipeline for the second half of this year. Uh, but right now, it's not about launching new products and services. It's about getting people to a place where they feel they have some safety, security, and peace of mind. And the only way that's going to happen is with third parties diving in, uh, more access to information, more transparency, more regulatory clarity. The bad guys will weed themselves out. Uh, you can't hide for long. It is expensive. It's going to be difficult. And we welcome that because we are here to build a long-term, you know, very transparent and viable business where we can create value and help millions of Americans participate in a blockchain economy and traditional finance opportunities as well, or alternative, and make their own decisions in a tax advantage environment, right? That's what we're here for. Right. We're not here to make a quick dollar. We lowered our fees. We lowered our percentage. We lowered our monthly fees. Um, it's not a, about making a quick dollar for us. It's about building a really cool, viable business that people can say, that's the way to do it. We, we can be one of those poster childs on how to do it the right way. Again, it takes a lot of trust and transparency and we have to start trusting each other a little bit more after we verify and demand more third-party access that was great you know the thing you were talking about just a little bit ago and this is then we'll wrap this up which was you talked about how the bad guys can't hide forever at some point things will come to light and it, it's amazing to me and i'll just leave this with, with everybody to to ponder which is it's amazing to me that the only time you see all the bad guys exposed is during the bear markets. And have we not just had one of the worst bear markets uh, ever in, 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 in crypto history? And it reminds me of a quote, which was from Warren Buffett. Very simple. Only when the time comes out, you discover who's been swimming naked. Yeah. And you guys have come through, I don't think just this one bear market. I think you've actually gone through two and you're still here and things are flourishing 
and you're still around and I'm still with you and I'm not going to take my funds out. I will be with you guys until something changes. So Kevin, I want to say thanks for coming by. Anything, any last comments before we get out of here? No, thank you for your time. And, and just, uh, look, you know, sometimes you want to say to people, I, action speaks so, so loudly. I can't hear what you're saying. I, I know a lot of the narrative out there is just lip service, but we try to remove some emotion from the equation and that's difficult. The human emotion in the equation, that element is critical, right? We, we, when you have nefarious actors and you have people inadvertently screwing up and pointing fingers elsewhere and losing keys to wallets, whatever it is, whether they meant to or not. Um, I think people generally start out trying to do the right thing and then fear, greed, and stupidity kicks in and bad things happen. But, um, you know, we are here. Uh, we're not, we're not going away. We are accessible. Um, Jared does a phenomenal job on our client service team. Email him, call him, email me, call me. Uh, I'm not the expert. These guys are, but I'm in there putting on my regulatory compliance hat from my PIMCO days and demanding that, um, you know, we all get to a place, all of us, not just us and Fortress. We don't want any of our competitors or any of their competitors to stumble like this again. Right. And it's, it's very true. And in, in when the tide goes out, right, we have our trunks on, right? We have our suits on. We're not swimming naked. Come and swim with us. So I think we're in a good place as long as continue, people continue to trust and verify and do the right thing. That's what it comes down to. Kevin, uh, really well said. Thorough uh, explanations. We appreciate it. Everybody, if you're looking for, well, first, a couple of things. If we're looking for uh, the video that, that we talked about, where we took a look at uh, Prime and then Fortress and iTrust, there's a video link in the description. Also, if you're looking for the team that uh, Kevin was talking about, I will link this website uh, in the description. And also you can check out Fireblocks and who they work with uh, presently. And again, links in the description. So uh, Kevin, again, thanks so much for stopping by. Excellent response, I appreciate it. Rob, look, we're here for transparency. Call or email anytime. If we don't have the answers immediately, we'll get them to you. If there is a glitch that you see or hear about before we're notified, that uh, would be rare, but it's certainly possible. Just call us, text us, email us. We will get on it and we will fix it. We will respond uh, to it. And uh, because we're here to build long-term you know, viability and sustainability. Sounds like a plan. All right, everybody. So that's Thank it for today. All right, have a good day. Thanks again for having us. Thanks, guys. I'll see you guys in the next one.